scenario I just showed you really depends on taking the same distributor and pulling it out of the engine and putting it back in. But what happens if you're putting in a different distributor? In that case, you won't have this mark to rely on. You're gonna be starting from scratch, but you will know where the rotor is pointing based on your mark. So if that's what's going on, what you wanna do is before you take it apart, make sure that you know exactly where on the distributor cap that rotor is pointing. Now in my scenario, I've got it pointed exactly at the number two cylinder. When I put in my new distributor, regardless of the configuration of the housing or where it is in the engine, I know that for the timing to be correct, I need to set it up again so that the terminal is pointed right in line with the rotor on that number two cylinder. Now that we've covered the installation in an engine that's already been running, we're gonna cover how to do the same installation on an engine that's been taken apart or you've turned it over with the distributor out of it or what have you. And in order to do that, we've gotta start with finding number one cylinder's top dead center. When you're installing a distributor from scratch, the goal is to figure out how to align the rotor with the number one terminal inside the cap. And to do that, you need to figure out where top dead center on the number one cylinder is on the engine. On the small block Chevy, it is the frontmost cylinder on the driver's side. I've removed the spark plug from that cylinder because what I'm gonna do is just lightly put my thumb over the hole and crank the engine over until I feel my thumb getting blown off by the compression stroke. Now, I don't wanna put my finger in that hole because the piston's gonna come up and smash it off and I'm gonna scream and curse and it's just gonna be a, a, an emergency room nightmare. So I'm barely gonna touch my thumb over the spark plug hole, crank over the engine and feel it blowing my thumb off, at which point I'm going to line up the timing mark on the damper with zero, which means top dead center on the compression stroke of the number one cylinder. So the spark plug is gone, my thumb is over the hole and I'm just tapping the engine over till I find that compression stroke. There, you hear that? My thumb blew off of the hole. And now I can look here on the MSD timing tape and its relationship to the timing pointer on the vibration dampener of the engine. And I can see that I got to 10 degrees after top dead center. That means I went a little bit too far. And what my goal actually is, is to set the, the piston right at the point of my initial timing mark which on this small block Chevy is gonna be about 12 degrees before top dead center. So I went 22 degrees too far, and I'm gonna keep bumping it around till I get it right. What will happen is you'll also see that the zero mark will come around again, but that is uh, top dead center on the exhaust stroke, not on the compression stroke, which is why I'm looking to have it blow my thumb out of the hole. There we go, and I got it perfect that time. Look, we're at about 11 degrees before top dead center, which means I can now proceed to drop the distributor in and perfectly line up the rotor and the terminal inside the cap so that my initial timing is just about perfect. Now that we have the piston in the number one cylinder exactly where we want it, at 11 degrees before top dead center, which is where our initial timing setting is gonna be, what we wanna do is install the distributor so that the rotor points exactly at the number one spark plug terminal. To help me do that, I've decided that I want this terminal to be number one, and I am marking that location on the housing. The truth is, at this point, you can put the number one terminal wherever you want. Wherever the distributor will fall in, if you make that number one and then just follow your firing order around the cap, that works. But the other truth is that a lot of guys like to follow the factory manual as far as where his number one goes, and that's what I've done here on this Chevy distributor. So, once I've got that marked, I can plop the distributor back in the engine. And here's where my rotor is. And so I'm going to line that mark on the housing up directly with the rotor, which I have done right there. Now I want to get my distributor clamp and clamp the housing in place so that it's exactly lined up and doesn't get messed up while I'm installing my cap and rotor and all the other parts. Now I've got my distributor housing locked down and we'll see if I got this right. Looking at my mark there on the housing and aligning it with the rotor, I install the cap, and sure enough, it all points directly to that number one cylinder. Now, I've cheated a bit here because we've pre-made our spark plug wires, but if I hadn't, what we would do is follow the firing order of the engine around the circumference of the cap. Again, we know the Chevy rotates clockwise and we know the firing order, so we would start with one and then go eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. 
there you go. Now that's the mechanical installation of the distributor. In this video we haven't covered any of the electronics, but remember you can download any of the MSD instruction manuals from msdignition.com. Now that we've got the distributor installed and tightened up, the next thing you're going to need to do is set the timing. Watch the next MSD video and you'll learn how. One last tech tip before we go. Some of you will have noticed that when I did the video, the distributor just slid right in there like magic. Well, that's not going to happen to you in the real world. The deal is, almost all distributors also drive the oil pump, and so you've got to get the oil pump drive, which is either a slot or a hex, aligned perfectly at the same time that the gear aligns to get the rotor where you want it. And that's a whole lot of stuff. You'll see a lot of people using a screwdriver trying to get that oil pump drive shaft lined up the right way, but here's an easier solution. Drop your distributor in and feel the gears in there as you do it. Right about like that, so that you've got the gear leading where you want the rotor just a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is crank the engine over and as the gear rotates, at some point it's gonna line up that oil pump drive shaft and it's gonna pull the distributor down into place. Watch this. Like magic. And now at this point, you're gonna have to take the engine all the way back around again, find number one at the top dead center to make sure that you got it, put it in the right place. But that's what you're gonna deal with in the real world.